today, Matt Braun, the mission organizer of SOAR, which is an incredible program. For those who don't know, can you tell us what the SOAR program is all about and how long it's been running? Yeah, we have really enjoyed SOAR, and this is actually the 21st year for SOAR uh, this year. So I haven't been a part of it all those years, but I've been able to be a part of it for the last number here. And it's been a joy to be able to connect youth mainly with missions locally here in Winnipeg. And so we love to say that it is a, both a youth conference and a missions conference. And we kind of put those two pieces together and bring youth together so they can get equipped in terms of what they're going to see. We can show them a little bit of what's in our city here and the opportunities, the ministries here. And then we really want them to actually go and try that out and serve alongside some of our long-term uh, ministries here in Winnipeg. Okay. So in the past, what does ministry with these youth on a sore weekend or week, what does that look like? Yeah, there's a couple options. Uh, so there's just the weekend version where some people will come, they'll get some of the introduction to what uh, ministry looks like. We do things on the weekends, one of the pieces we call learning tour. And so they actually walk around the north end and go into a whole bunch of the ministries and hear stories from those leaders. They do a blanket exercise, which is a really good uh, representation of uh the Indigenous uh, community and what's happened across Canada over the number of years. So it kind of opens their eyes up to some of the community that they're interacting with. And uh, we you know, just give them an experience so that they can see um, what is around them that they're not usually seeing, that they're not usually interacting with. And like while they're walking around the North End, they're meeting people in that region. And uh, we give them a toonie for lunch and they got to go find out how they can get a lunch for just $2 as somebody typically living on the streets is, is uh, trying to get a lunch for $2. So some of it is experiential that way. And then we want to connect them actually with the ministry. So during the week, they actually spend time with them. A lot of them are running kind of a VBS program out of some of the churches in the North End or places like Inner City Youth Alive or Freedom House or some of these other ministries. They're going to be running VBS type programs and having some of the kids from the community because it is the spring break. And so they can have them come in there. And uh, there's a lot of just different opportunities for them to connect with uh, some of the needs of our local community. Sounds like a lot is going on. Why is a program like SOAR important for youth? You know, I find uh, that it's hard sometimes for youth to to disengage the busyness of everything else that they have going on. And uh, it's hard to find the time to really commit to what does my relationship with Christ look like and how am I going to live that out? And uh, SOAR is that space. And we wanted to create an intentional space where they are there uh, for a number of days. They're spending it in community. They're exploring uh, what that is through some teaching and spending time in the word and also in worship. But then they're actually getting to go out and, and use some of those things that they're learning and uh, spend time with the, these ministry leaders who have been living this out. And so they get to see what they're doing there. And oftentimes, too, th like these youth haven't seen the need that's right in their next door. And it opens up their eyes to what's right around them. You've done this for a number of years. What have you seen in terms of this sort of program and its long-term effects in blessing the community. Yeah, I think I've heard stories because I haven't been a part of it right from the beginning, but I know one of our ministry partners right from the beginning said, we won't really know uh, how the impact of SOAR is until maybe 10 years in or so. And I think one of the big pieces for me is uh, that connection that we have to our ministry partners in the North End. So we work with probably about 15 different ministries and uh, and we've just had a long-term relationship with them where they're asking or longing for us to actually come and bring a team uh, to spend time with them during that week. And so it's really good for us to build those relationships and be able to see some of that stuff. But really for me, the, the fruit comes in the transformation that happens in the hearts of the youth. And uh, I would say, I, I don't know what the exact stat is, but I would say probably about 80% of youth that come off of SOAR decide to be baptized or decide to in some way uh, make some sort of uh, change in their lives. And so it's exciting to be able to see youth come on a program like this and spend some intentional time in community and then have that transformational moment. 
When it comes to this year, how many teens are you having participate and what are you expecting? Yeah, we have 200 teens this year uh, coming together and uh, we're really excited about that number coming back up again. We've uh, been slow for the last number of years as we everything has slowed down. And so we're really excited about those numbers coming back up. And so for me, one of the big pieces is community. I love to see uh, churches coming together, not just one community who can go and do an awesome uh, missions experience, but all these different ones coming together and seeing them interact with one another and uh, and build some of these things so we know that we are part of a larger church. We're not just one church in our own space on our own island, but we are part of something larger. The, the story that God has for us is much bigger, even if it is just Winnipeg that we're looking at. Such an important lesson to learn. And, yet, you know, if they can learn it young, that's even better. Mm-hmm. I have two teenagers myself, as you are going to venture out with 200 teenagers with more kids that you're going to be interacting with. How can we here at CHVN and our listeners pray for you? Oh, man, there are a lot of logistics that come with getting 200 youth moving around and getting them connected with different ministries. So that's a big piece. But for the bigger one for me is that they would actually um, really have a moment where they are meeting with Jesus in in that time. There's something transforming or changing within their hearts. And then also that as they take that and they connect with the communities, the ministries that they're connecting with, that they'd be able to share that gospel truth, that love that has been transforming within them and be able to share that with the communities they're going to. All right. Well, we're going to ask our listeners to pray. I know I will be praying as well for you guys. I think it's an incredible opportunity for you. So thank you. Is there anything else you wanted to share? No, I think that's that's about it. That's good. Well, it's been a pleasure, Matt. Thank you for your heart for youth and for blessing the whole community of Winnipeg. Really appreciate it. And I hope this week and weekend goes really well. Thanks very much.